Studies in family, another chapter of where the emotions break out. Family meals. Studies in family disorders accuse the evening meal of being the major focus of household tension. <laughs> Here at table, family fights over money, duties, politics, or morals are most likely to break out, and later eating patterns, the rhythms of chewing, swallowing, breathing, and talking. All that has to happen at once, you know, and it's very easy to get that thrown off. <laughs> chewing, swallowing, breathing, and talking. The intermissions between silence and noise, the very notion of what constitutes good food, all that takes on definitive form. Here, too, gross food disorders like anorexia and bulimia often appear first. Whether the atmosphere at meals be boisterous and competitive, or chaotic with phoning and TV, or gravely formalized, tension is always on the menu. Now, tension at the start of a meal belongs with the instinct of appetite. Just go to the zoo at feeding time and watch the animals pace and snarl or ask a good Italian waiter about getting the prima, the first course, on the table quickly. The, the whole style in a good Italian restaurant is to get the prima there right away, and never mind the check. That comes slow and hours later. But the first course has got to get there quickly. Meals are meant to start fast and conclude in digestive leisure. Tension, therefore, belongs to the moment of sitting down at table, and not only for animal reasons. Tension arises as an unconscious, whoop, as an unconscious, it's gone. Well, we'll make it up. <laughs> it ended with the word unconscious, right? Here it is. Unconscious recognition of the sacramental nature of the family act. Grace overtly acknowledges the sacramental tension. And grace may be less to invoke a blessing than it is to ward off the demons. And so do all the many rituals that go with family meals. Fixed places, dinner on time, the rituals of clean hands, of setting places and clearing the table, and the endless attempts to mollify the tension with light music, dimmer lights, rules concerning what is appropriate to talk about at the table. All this elaborate etiquette, and every family will have some rituals even if utterly disguised as just dig in, these forces are ready to explode civilized conventions at the most innocuous provocation. It's nobody's personal fault. This is what happens at the moment of the eating. Not only the animal tensions, but the archetypal forces, the demons that sit around the edge of the room and just wait for an opening. Maybe that's why we now have TV dinners and all the rest. We've given up even trying to do it. Another place of emotion, going back home. Whether from prison camp after a war or just taking the bus home for Thanksgiving, homecoming is fraught with dreadful anticipation. Opening the front door releases overwhelming emotions, also the side door and also the counterforce of repression against those emotions that so often characterize the stifled atmosphere of returning. Here we must remember that going home is always going back home. Returning is essentially a regressive act in keeping with the essential function of the family. Regressive act in the sense that independence and moving out is the heroic thing. So, going, so we talk about going back home, a regressive act in keeping with the essential function of family to provide shelter for the regressive needs of the soul. Essential function of family to provide shelter for the regressive needs of the soul. Everyone needs a place to crawl and lick his wounds, a place to hide and be 12 years old, inept and needy. The bar, the bed, the boardroom, and the buddies do not meet the needs which always limp along behind the myth of independent individuality. See, that's something we tend to forget. We become independent and individual, but there's all that stuff that limps behind the inept, needy part. 
Something always remains undeveloped, and this piece needs to go back home, as country and Western lyrics often enough affirm. Going back may mean sleeping till two in the afternoon or taking refuge in the bathroom or crying with mom in the kitchen or just complaining as do the grandparents who fall ill during every visit. Going home at whatever age offers going back, regression. And the fight against family during these return trips is therefore a displacement of the fight against regression. Say that one again. The fight against fam family during these return trips is therefore a displacement of the fight against regression. We don't want to admit the weakness in our characters and the hungers in our desires. We don't want to admit that we've not grown up and so blame the family for both bringing out our worst and then for not indulging it enough. <laughs> Meanwhile, that strange sense of consciousness ebbing away, going down the family drain. You just sit there and you can just feel everybody going down the drain. <laughs> the debilitating energy loss strikes everyone alike as if a communal power outage. Everyone caught in repeating and resisting old patterns. Nothing changed after all these years. All this analysis, all this therapy, and I'm right where I was. No one can get out even for a walk to break the spell. The whole family sinking deeper into the upholstery. And TV has little to do with it and may even be in such moments the household god who saves. These moments attest to the capacity of family for sharing. French anthropology used to speak of a participation mystique, a mystical participation in a tribe. In a common soul or psychic state, and for containing the regressive needs of the soul. You know, at the uh, no one is at fault, no one is kicked out, and no one can be helped. No one can be helped. In the paralysis lies the profoundest source of acceptance. See, we think acceptance has to do with fixing it or making it better or empathy or sympathy. Or, Paralysis is the greatest empathy there is. You're just there with the other person. You can't do anything. There's no attempt to change anybody. At the end of the Oedipus um, Rex, at the very end, there's a sentence, Take him in, blind Oedipus. Take him in. It is most decent that only kin should see and hear the troubles of kin. So that's the way it goes. When you, nobody can do anything about it, grandpa goes on grumbling, brother attacking the administration, sister introvertedly attending her eczema, and mother goes on covering up with solicitous busyness. Everyone goes down the drain because family love allows family pathology. An immense, inexpressed tolerance felt as hopelessness for the hopeless shadow in each, the shadow that we each carry as permanent part of our baggage and which we unpack when we go home. 